there may be a lot of smartphones out there and many of them are pretty good. However, there may still be some of the top-notch devices you don't know yet. This is Linus and you're watching Techline HD. Check out the review of what may be the best smartphone you've never heard of. Vivo X-Shot Just a short introduction that Vivo is a Chinese-based premium smartphone manufacturer. It is not widely known outside China, but the company has made itself famous by producing the first smartphone with advanced hi-fi audio chips, 2K resolution display, and at the moment it holds the crown of the slimmest device on the planet, which is only 4.75 mm thick. This time around, I want to review a high-end camera-centric device which I've been using for half a year already but making a review just now. Therefore, I know all the ups and downs of the device so stay tuned. The retail packaging is really premium as it is made out of quality cardboard and plastic materials. The first item included is a charging brick which has 2 amps of output so it charges the device quite fast. Another item is a regular micro USB charging cable. What is more, the manufacturer included high quality earphones. After testing it out for a while, I can say that they sound really great and stands out of other out of the smartphone box earphones I've tested so far. Moreover, you can find an envelope which includes a SIM rejector tool which I already lost. Also, there are some instruction manuals, most importantly, there is a plastic hard case included which is a nice touch by the manufacturer. What I like about it is that it is not too bulky, it is transparent and doesn't cover the whole device. Finally, here's the device itself. It is made out of high quality materials which include a metal frame, Gorilla Glass 3 and polycarbonate. Although it was released almost a year ago, it can still be called a flagship device. It sports a 5.2 inch Full HD display, Snapdragon 801 chip clocked at 2.5 GHz, 3 GB of RAM, 32 GB of storage with the additional micro SD card slot. Also there is a 13 and 8 megapixels camera combo on the back and front respectively, Hi-Fi audio chips and more. On the front of the device, you can find the 8 megapixels shooter with the LED flash, earpiece, and the proximity sensor. Going down to the bottom, you can find 3 capacitive keys. However, they don't have a backlight, which can be a disappointment for some users. They do have a reflective coating, but it only works in the daylight. The back of the device is made out of white glossy polycarbonate material which is a fingerprint magnet. But since it is white, it is not that visible. Still, if you don't like glossy surfaces like me, you can either buy a matte white version or just buy the back cover on online stores like Aliexpress. It is not user replaceable but it was easy for me to take it off with the help of nails and a credit card. The back shows the main accent of the Vivo X-Shot, it is its camera. It is a 13 megapixels shooter, it has an optical image stabilization, dual tone, dual LEDs. It can also shoot both 1080p and 4K videos. It is protruding quite a bit which means that you may want to take care of it if you want to avoid scratches. After a half a year of usage, I don't see any scratches yet. The bottom of the back is where the speaker is located. You will hear a sound test a bit later in this review. On the right, you can find a metal made volume rocker, power on and off switch, and a dedicated two staged camera button. On the left, there is a SIM as well as the micro SD card slot, which sit in one tray. You will need a supply SIM ejector tool to open it up and just light it back in once you load up your cards. The bottom side of the metal frame spots a mic along with a micro USB charging part. The top of the device is where the second noise cancelling mic and the headphone jack are located. Vivo X-Shot runs FunTouch OS which is a highly customized version of Android. 
However, the device still runs the outdated 4.3 version of Google's OS, at least on the international model, which may sound like a deal breaker for some. On the other hand, it runs very fast and it is practically impossible to see a lag or hiccup, doesn't matter what you do. The UI runs very smoothly and all the apps open up quickly. As usual for the Chinese manufacturers, there is no app drawer and all the apps sit on the home screens like on the iPhone. On the other hand, the device is highly customizable as you can change a lot of things. One of the highlights is the themes engine where you can choose from the variety of preloaded themes or download even more online. If you don't like that, you may just install a different launcher. It is Android OS after all. Another feature which is worth mentioning is the so-called smart motion. You may have seen this elsewhere and it may sound like a gimmick but I find a few features useful like double tap to wake, like scroll up to unlock the device or scrolling down to launch the camera. There are a lot more to play with. In case you feel that 5.2 inch display is too big, there is a one-handed mode which may be useful for some users. Also there is a multitasking window mode included which is however a clear copy from Samsung. But the most impressive part of it is how smoothly all those at the first glance gimmicky features are running. A very convenient thing is the quick settings menu which opens up from the bottom. It definitely helps you once you operate the device in one hand. Here you can adjust the brightness, open or close recent apps or adjust some settings using customizable toggles. People wasn't shy calling their pre-installed application iManager. Nevertheless, it is a really useful app where you can manage the memory, app, storage, power and do all other useful stuff. The device has a general and super power saving modes. The latter one disables all the energy draining features and leaves just the most essential ones to save the battery. The battery capacity is just 2600 milliamp hours. However, I'm very impressed with it. It gets me easily through the day. In fact, it can even last you one and a half or even two days on an average use. More intensive tasks like gaming run absolutely fine. With a combination of a bright, sharp and vivid IPS LCD display and powerful processing package, you can get some great entertainment experience. The loudspeaker is not as good as HTC's boom sound system, but it is still loud and produces a high quality sound. It is definitely one of the best ones I've heard. Media consumption on the Vivo X Shot is just a blast. 1080p or even 4K videos run without any issues. Scrolling back and forth in video is just seamless. Other essential apps like Gallery also run just flawlessly. I said that the loudspeaker is really good but I didn't play any music so check this out. The music app is decent and quite convenient. However, I'm used to using the power amp for years so I don't play music through this app much. On the other hand, this app can unleash the hi-fi audio power as the device spots dedicated hardware chips for that. It has a lot of detailed settings and if you know what you're doing, you can achieve an extraordinary sound quality. Naturally, hi-fi features only work with headphones plugged in. In the end, I'm really impressed what this device is capable of. Alright, let's go to the main feature of the device. As the X-Shot name implies, it is a camera-centric device and it was the main reason I bought it. At the time of the release, the company were first in the world to introduce an 13 megapixel shooter with f1.8 aperture, 6 element lens and optical image stabilization. 
The camera app is pretty straightforward and all the features are working just fine. What is more interesting is that there is a pro mode included where you can adjust all kinds of stuff if you want to take control. However, I found the auto mode to be working great and I use it most of the time. The daylight pictures are very sharp, there is plenty of resolved detail and the color reproduction is outstanding as it tends to capture natural looking colors. What is the most impressive is how quickly it captures the pictures even in the low light. Also the physical shutter key is a pleasure to take pictures with. However, most of the flagships have no issues with daylight pictures as there is plenty of light reaching the camera sensor. Once the camera is taken inside but the lighting is still good, it can also get very good results. If there is not that much light, the detail level goes a bit down. However, the Vivo X shot manages to squeeze out as much as possible from its sensor. Also, the lower light capturing speeds are better than for example LG G3 and iPhone 6 I compared with. The lower aperture number is, the more light the camera sensor can get. And if you supply that with optical image stabilization and some software tricks, you should get some pretty good looking night pictures. The Vivo X shot boasts a proprietary night mode which can definitely deliver, however, there is some noise in the pictures and the detail level is definitely lower but I think that the night pictures are one of the best I've seen coming out of the smartphone. As I've mentioned before, the front firing 8 megapixel shooter also has the LED flash, therefore night selfies are definitely possible with this device. The quality of selfie camera is one of the best I've seen so far. The LED flash illuminates the scene perfectly, the shutter speed is fast and thus you can have a good looking picture in the dark. And here comes the fun part as there is a live beauty mode which gives you some light makeup, face beauty and weird eye enlargement treatment. Well, it's more for girls but I tried it out anyway. 1080p video is a bit underwhelming for a camera centric device. Well, it is good, there is quite a lot of detail, colors look natural, but the footage is not the best you can get from a smartphone in my opinion. The 4K video quality is better. The sensor captures plenty of detail and the footage looks sharp. However, for some reason, the optical image stabilization is not compatible with the 4K video. Therefore, you will get quite jittery footage if you don't use the tripod. The videos taken inside look decent and the optical image stabilization gets the job done absorbing the movement of the camera. The night video should be the department where the Vivo X shot shines. However, this is not the best out there. The video lacks in details, struggles with focusing and the full video does not look that sharp. Also the audio quality could be better in my opinion. So there you have it, the Vivo X shot which is probably the best device you've never heard of. It has some premium looks and feels great in the hand, although it was released almost a year ago in China but it still has some killer specs. It has a great processing power, some interesting features and customization options. Also it has some superb audio capabilities, great display and good battery life. 
picture quality is really very good on both rear and front facing cameras in nearly all conditions. However, the video footage is not the best I've seen but I tested it out only with the Vivo's proprietary app. Another shortcoming is that the international firmware is still stuck at Android 4.3 whereas Chinese users have the KitKat version for a long time. On the other hand, the software works very fast, fluid and it is one of the better Android implementations. One more disadvantage is the lack of NFC but I never use it anyway. In the end, despite some shortcomings, the Vivo X Shot is a really great flagship device and it shows what some respected Chinese manufacturers are capable of. It was Linus and thanks for watching my YouTube channel. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Please check out my channel for some more tech reviews and please subscribe if you want to see more. Also, please check out TechLine HD Facebook page to get all the news first. See you next time.